Welcome to lesson two, where we will be learning all about the history of plastic. In the last lesson, we looked at what, when, and how we use plastic in our everyday lives. But where did it all begin? I wonder, do you know what plastic is usually made from? I'll give you a clue. It's made from something that we extract from deep under the earth or under the sea. You might have guessed it. Most plastic we use is made from oil. And oil is part of another group of materials that we use to create energy. You might know the word. These are called fossil fuels. Can you name some of the other fossil fuels? Nowadays, we hear lots about fossil fuels. Do you know what the big problem at the moment is with fossil fuels? You might have heard a lot about why fossil fuels aren't so great over the last few years. When we burn fossil fuels to create energy, we also release gases into the atmosphere. Do you know the names of any of these gases? Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is one of the ones that we're most worried about. Do you know what happens when carbon dioxide builds up in our atmosphere? It creates a blanket around the Earth, and that blanket holds the heat in, which means that our Earth is getting warmer. And as our Earth is getting warmer, the climate is changing. You've probably heard about climate change by now. When I start thinking about climate change and how big a problem it is, I get really overwhelmed. And, and I wonder what I can do to fix it. And I can't fix it. Well, not on my own anyway. But I can do little things that will make a big difference. And if I can teach other people how to do these little things too, then all our actions will add up and hopefully lead to a better, brighter future for us and our planet. When I visit schools around Ireland, I really am filled with hope. I can see that young people today know that looking after the planet is our number one priority and they're eager to help in any way that they can. And the way that I'm going to show you how to help is by using less plastic in your lives and by becoming plastic free ambassadors. So where were we? That's right, we were talking about fossil fuels. Do you know how fossil fuels are made? So over millions of years, the remains of the plants and animals that used to live on our planet have been compressed and compacted way down under layers of soil and earth and even water. And over that time, they have become fossil fuels like oil, gas, coal, peat, or we might call it turf or baquettes. Now, sometimes when I'm in schools and I ask people about fossil fuels, they suggest timber or wood. And while they're right that it is a fuel, it's not made over hundreds of thousands of years from fossils. Where does it come from? Trees. And for wood and timber to be a sustainable source of fuel, we need to plant more trees. There are many other ways that we can make clean or sustainable energy. Can you think of a few? If you said solar, or wind energy or hydro energy from water in a river or from the tide at sea, then you're on the right track. Now that was a very quick mini lesson on some very big topics, climate change, fossil fuels, how we make energy. I really encourage you to go and learn more about all of these topics. Everybody on earth should understand how we make energy, how we make electricity, how we run our transport, so that we can build better systems that are safer and healthier for us and our planet. Take away cups and straws. We use takeaway cups and straws when we are on the go or when we go to the cinema or get fast food. Lots of people get takeaway coffees, teas and smoothies in disposable cups. We use them because they are convenient, light and disposable. Don't forget to question clever marketing strategies and media images that lead us to believe that we should drink on the go. Why not take the time to sit down and relax while we have our beverage? Most takeaway cups are not recyclable. They are lined with a layer of plastic to make them waterproof. We call this a composite or mixed material. Straws are also made from a kind of plastic that we cannot recycle, so takeaway cups and straws need to be put in your waste bin. 
If a cup does say it's compostable, it needs to go into your brown bin to be taken away for industrial composting. They are better than conventional takeaway cups, but we still use resources to make them and throw them away after one use. Instead of using takeaway cups, why not sit down with a real cup or mug and enjoy 10 minutes of peace? But if you really want to take it away with you, invest in a travel mug or flask. If you're getting a fizzy drink or smoothie, why not ask them to put it into your reusable water bottle? Instead of plastic straws, there are now so many options. Paper straws are one step better and can go into your compost bin, but we still throw it away after one use. Why not get yourself a reusable straw that you can wash and use again? These can be made from many materials including metal and bamboo, there are even edible straws. But do you know what is the most sustainable? no straw at all. Takeaway cups and straws take lots of resources and energy to be made and then we throw them away after just one drink. If you get yourself a reusable cup or flask you could save hundreds of cups a year from going to landfill. It is estimated that there are 8.3 billion plastic straws polluting beaches around the world. Plastic straws make up such a big part of marine litter that they will be banned in the EU from 2021. Prepare now by making your simple swaps. So let's get back to our topic for today, the history of plastic. Humans have been living on this planet for about 200,000 years. Do you know how long ago it was that scientists discovered we could make plastic? In the middle of the 19th century, scientists began to explore and to discover different ways that they could make a plastic-like substance. They were trying to find something that they could use instead of ivory from elephants' tusks in order to make snooker balls. But it was in 1907 that a scientist created Bakelite, a kind of modern-day plastic that was used to cover all the electrical cables. Over the next few decades, they made more and more different types of plastic during World War II, plastic became increasingly popular and people all around the world were amazed at this revolutionary material. And it was, and it is amazing. Let's think for a moment. Let's come up with a list of adjectives that describe the advantages of plastic. So you probably said some of these. It's light, it's waterproof, it's cheap to make, it's easily moldable, it's flexible, it's easy to clean, it can be transparent, it can be made into loads of different shapes, loads of different sizes, it's durable and it lasts a really long time. Plastic can literally be life-changing when used to create a new prosthetic limb or used to create a tiny medical device that can go right inside your heart and save your life. After the war, more and more things began to be made of plastic. But even in 1950s Ireland, there wasn't a lot of plastic to be seen. My mom was about your age back then, and when she used to go to the shop, there was no plastic. What materials do you think were used before plastic? So things like paper, metal, glass, wood, but there wasn't really any plastic. Now I want you to think about going into a shop nowadays. Is there any plastic? In fact, there's so much plastic that it's hard to imagine how you would run a shop without using any plastic. Over the last 20 years, we've been making more and more things out of plastic. But at the same time, people are beginning to understand that there are a lot of disadvantages to plastic. I wonder, can you name a few? Most of the rubbish that we throw away nowadays is plastic, and it ends up in landfill and doesn't break down for hundreds of years. Some of it ends up on our streets and in the countryside and in the oceans. Plastic pollution is everywhere. And it's not only an eyesore. It damages the habitats and lives of so many creatures and other living beings on our planet. So while plastic was and is a revolutionary material, we're no longer using it in a way that's sustainable or safe for the future of our planet. Maybe you've already got yourself a reusable straw, but if you don't, don't worry because the most sustainable thing is not to use any straw at all. But to do that, you have to be prepared when you go into a cafe or a restaurant to say no thank you to the plastic straws. 
So get yourself prepared and be ready to say no straw please. Today we also want to swap out our takeaway cups. So coffee cups, tea cups or the taller ones with the lids and straws that we might use for smoothies or fizzy drinks. So what can you use instead? Get yourself a reusable keep cup for coffee or a flask that you can use or you can bring your reusable water bottle with you. So for today's reuse and upcycling challenge, we're gonna be using takeaway cups and plastic straws. So if you have any in your house, I would love to see what you make from them. Please share a picture with us using the hashtags PF4Kids or Plastic Free Ambassador. For today's challenge, I want you to engage your friends. So how can you contact them and spread the word about becoming a plastic free ambassador? Can you make a phone call? Can you write them an email? Can you make a short video to share with them everything that you're learning about becoming a plastic free ambassador? It is so much more fun when you have your friends and family on board too.